Hi, everybody. It's me, Tatiana Diomi, or also known as Tatiana Tonic, which is my DJ name. Um, welcome back to Bring the House Down. Um, for our very first episode, I'm so happy to introduce our first guest for our first episode. Hi, everyone. My name's Leanne Brown from a UK band called Sweet Female Attitude, a.k.a. Sweet F.A. Oh, my God. Yes. Um... Well, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm in awe, like, clearly, like, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, bless you, but, and um, it's so early there as well. Yeah, but it's, it's worth it, like, really, just talking to you, you know, interviewing you, yeah. yeah. I'll start with, like, um, your start in music, like, how did that begin? Like, did you have any musical influences? Um, and also, like, um, the start of like the creation behind the song Flowers and like how did that begin as well like who did you meet with that and just yeah just creating everything yeah well I started in music probably about three or four years of age my dad is heavily into music and he always had sound systems and there was always music in the house and he bought um a an organ you know the the two tier organs and my brother and I used to play it and we learned how to play the keys ourselves and it's just naturally through being around music we became musicians ourselves in school bands um i started off as a professional musician as part of a caribbean steel band um and then we would go and do shows and eventually it started where we do shows in the band where they'd want a singer so we'd be playing the, the pans and they'd need someone to sing and um I just naturally began singing through the steel band. And then when I went to college in the UK, we go to college at 16. So when we went to college at 16, I went to study media studies uh, and journalism. And I went to um, an audition that was being held by a record label who wanted singers. And I was there to write an article piece on the audition, but somebody had put my name down without me knowing anonymously to audition so my name got called and I was like oh my gosh um so I did it because I felt under pressure and I got the audition and what that meant was I got um, music management and got to record in studios and I got management and I joined a writing team and over the next five years we, we consistently wrote songs Flowers was one of them however I was away on holiday on vacation that week and um, so the the two guys in the writing team wrote most of the the bare bones and then I came from vacation and then I did the embellishments and the the runs and the harmonies and stuff like that just to make the song a little bit more feminine I suppose um and then we just spent years auditioning for record labels and eventually we got a record deal an album deal and it kind of took off from there and then the other member of Sweet Female Attitude, Catherine, joined later on and then the song Flowers was released in the UK and became a hit record even though it was recorded as an R&B song. Um, it was a UKG which is UK Garage which is a cross between R&B and house music. That's kind of how we describe it and it became the biggest dance music in the UK at the time which made the song become a hit record. Um, and it's, it's still going today. We're, we're still very busy touring Europe, really, and um, with that song and then other songs we do as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's always, and I've always been writing music with other musicians. I've been a university lecturer, um, do, teaching harmonies, harmonics, song composition, performance. So I've always had, my foot in some kind of musical door for the last 25 years, I'd say, maybe 30, yeah, nearly 30 years. Oh my goodness, I feel old. That's really amazing. Amazing, Also just finding out like how Flowers was created and like, especially through your perspective too. Like I remember the first time when like I listened to the song and it just gave a really good like emotional feel, like really good feelings just like it came out and everything. So I was like, yeah, it's a really great song. Oh, thank you. I, I'm so pleased that it has that impact. And I think sometimes, and I've said this to students, is to get a hit record is difficult because there are so many components required to make that song be known by the masses. 
But I always say one of the most important things is to make sure the song's in the right key because there are certain keys with certain songs which touch the hearts of other people and it's about resonating. And if that song would have been done in a different key, it may not have had the same impact. Um, so I think with the song Flowers, I also think and um, the introduction, the, the vocal, the I was, I remember at the time I'd had to record that line, oh, a thousand times and I was tired and near to tears. So I think that first line when the song comes in, what you are actually hearing is me almost crying. Like, I want to go home to my mom. Um, and I think it's because it has emotional intent. Sometimes we don't know what that thing is where we just automatically feel. But I think the song makes people feel. Also the chords as well are kind of happy chords. And um, I think those components help to make it where it makes people feel a certain mood. So it's, I think it was unintentional, but when you analyze it, there are certain components when you analyze that and other songs which kind of have a similar impact on people. The ingredients are generally a feeling and being in the right key with the right chords and the right rhythm, of course. And like, speaking of like impact, um, the song Flowers is, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, like 25, 24 years old. And um, older, again, it's older than that. It was written in 1990, I want to say December 96. Yeah, it was written 28 years ago. Wow. Um, or almost 28 years ago. And it took five or six years for it to be released, but it had many different versions. It had been in many different studios. It took a long time to get the right mix and the and the right ingredients to make it where it was a hit record. It took a long time. Wow, so you must have been like, how old? Since like Flowers, the Sunship Edit, you were 17 and like yeah. 96, yeah. Yeah, I was 16 going on 17, I'm sure. Yeah, I was in college, yes. Yeah. So we start college at 16, so I was I was 16. Um, and then I, th I left college at 17 to take music seriously full time because we became so invested in the songs and the writing and the refining and performance. Um, so, yeah, I left college and then I went back to college later in you know my 20s. Um, but then at that time, it seemed it seemed a better use of my time to, to invest in the music. And it, it did pay off, you know, so I'm glad I did that. I wouldn't advise everyone else to do that because sometimes it can stall you getting your degree or whatever but for me it worked out that way wow and like has your perspective of the music industry changed like since you were like younger to like now and like was there anyone like to support you was there like anything like um pressuring you during that time um and do you think the uk garage scene has changed since you were younger as well absolutely it's funny because one thing that I was never prepared for was what it's like to um, have a hit record and how busy you become. You don't get any sleep whatsoever. Um, and you, um, you, you don't get any sleep whatsoever. You have to travel overnight all the time, um, morning interviews, late night shows, um, and it's relentless rehearsals, recording studios. Um, and you get burnout quite quickly. Um, another thing um, that I found was a, I didn't expect was the emphasis on how you look, because I'd always been, um, I'd always been somebody who was in studios all the time and authentically for the music, but then all of a sudden I had to make a music video and I didn't look like what artists back in the nineties should have looked like, which was very skinny, um and model like which I wasn't and Catherine wasn't and as authentic musicians we felt like we had to kind of be marketable but we weren't for that time it's different now because it's uh, it's much easier for young people to be free in your own skin and people are more about the personality and entertainment value and quality of music whereas then it was model first then we'll hear what you've got to to offer. Whereas with Flowers, people heard the song before they saw us. And a lot of people said when they saw us, I expected you to be prettier. You sound prettier than you look. 
so that was hard and that did cause even to this day I don't want to say psychological issues because I've got a handle on anything like that I can analyze it enough but it did um give me a complex um I can't speak for Catherine but I know for myself it gave me a complex it made me very conscious in a way that I wasn't before and it put me off being wanting to be a music artist in that limelight a lot it did put me off because I never got into music to be scrutinized in that way I got into music because I love music I love making music I love listening to music I love everything around music I didn't want to be a model never did and I felt like it was um lead trying to make us have us in a or put us onto a trajectory which was unhealthy so, but we luckily we had a great record label who were all for us being authentic to ourselves. Unfortunately, what happened with the garage scene kind of coincided with us not being able to follow up the same success because we went over to Germany for a year recording and promoting in Europe. And then what happened to the garage scene in the UK, it didn't really spread far outside of the UK. Very popular here at home but not outside and by the time we came back from Germany one year later the scene had died down um, and we're not quite sure what happened because it became very commercial but then um, we had people from outside the scene infiltrate to cause trouble so all of the artists within we all got labelled with trouble and um, promoters stopped booking because they were scared of trouble, the police would clamp down on any events. And eventually the this, this scene kind of died out. What's happened now is all of the UK garage artists who were um, popular back then are still going strong now, but we're all in our 30s, late 30s, 40s and 50s. And we've still got the energy, and we've still got the ability to perform, but we do it with much more integrity and business acumen now, as opposed to it being um, one big, um, one big party. We, we, we've we been through the industry, we're 25 years in, so we kind of know how to handle our business a lot better. And I think that's really great, especially now that I think you're taking more like control of your music now and like just being more independent. And I did want to mention, um, uh, sorry, the newest single that you released, um, Harley Breathe. Would yes. you like to go into that? And um, because like, it seems like you have a really great momentum when it comes to music and just keep doing it no matter what. Yeah, I love to do music. And luckily I've got so many producer friends um, who say, I've got this track. Is there any vocals that you have? Or can you write something over this? Um, and it's predominantly in the house music scene and garage, but more house music. And the Peveril brothers I've known for years, I've done music with them before. And when I heard the song, I said, I don't think it needs a full song over this. It needs kind of like a vintage top line, um, just a few words, and then let the song breathe. And then because I said that, then the words hardly breathe came to mind. And that's how the lyrical content um, kind of grew. But then what happened is myself and one of the guys from the Peveril Brothers, Matt, we both ended up really sick with respiratory illnesses. So I'm literally just recovering from two months of pneumonia. So I did, almost didn't want to promote the song because I thought we've jinxed ourselves because it's hardly breathed and I've not been able to breathe for two months um, and neither has Matt. So I wish we'd have named it something else because I do believe sometimes you can you can call something into being. And I thought, have I called this into being with the, the title of this song? But now we're well again and, and hopefully... Um, We've, we've released it in time for it to become something that gets played in the summer in Ibiza. We go out to Ibiza quite a lot to perform there for the beach parties um, and Spain. So it has a quite, um, it has a very dominant house music scene. So quite often we will go and perform there and hopefully Hard to Breathe will do some damage on the beachfront dance floors this summer. Wow, that's really cool. And I hope you're doing okay also with like respiratory issues and everything. Thank yeah. you. Just about, just about. Thank you. Yeah, I've had to start doing gigs again. So I've done maybe five shows in the last two weeks. Um, I had yeah. to cancel shows before this because it was just so, um, I literally couldn't breathe. But yeah, on the mend now, um, lots of healing and, and um, rest has helped. Thank you.
<laughs> and um, in the beginning, I remember when you were talking about your um, uprising in music, like um, you were talking about how you were um, at a lot of Caribbean shows and whatnot. And I did some research on your background and finding out that you're also half Jamaican. Um, has your heritage ever like translated onto your music or if you want to get into that? Yeah, absolutely. I think because I grew up with my dad, who's who's heavily well, both parents, but my dad was the musical influence, and um, he always used to be playing music in the house, a lot of reggae music and R and B music and soul music. So the way I kind of um, write music is 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 influenced by those songs that I heard as a kid, like Freddie McGregor and Karen White. I don't know if you you know these these people. Probably too young, but. Um, they're very they're very Googleable, um, and I think through listening to a lot of R and B music, I would say I've translated those influences into how I write house music. Um, which, to be fair, I do think house music in general vocally is quite influenced from R and B, um, and and the Jamaican culture is very entrenched. Even though I haven't actually done a reggae song, I used to be in a roots reggae band playing the keyboards, but I would say, my dad always says, you need to cut a reggae track. And I will do sometime, but I just haven't met the right producer who can do the right reggae track yet. But I, every time I hear reggae music, I automatically feel at ease because it reminds me of being coddled as a child and childhood. Um, but I wouldn't say, um, oh, actually, some of the songs that we do in our live performance set, not releases, sometimes we put some ragga and bashment in there. Um, just to kind of make it a little bit nastier because the crowd pops off if they hear a deep bass. So I would say my biggest influence from my Jamaican heritage is a love of bass. Set aside the food because I cook Jamaican food very well. But um, I definitely, definitely think I'm driven by bass, which is a direct result of being half Jamaican, I think. Yeah. Oh my God, wait, I love that. Wait, what do you cook? Because I also eat Jamaican food, but I'm African, I'm Congolese. So mo mo I'm sorry, mostly, you know, I eat like pondu and like rice and everything. And like when it comes to music, like especially like Afrobeats that I also resonate with. And like, like yeah. also like, especially with like Congolese music as well. Like there isn't like much of like when it comes to like Afrobeats, it's kind of like not hard, but like a um, lot of like, kind of like, dancing footsteps I don't know like I can't describe it but when it comes to Congolese music it's kind of like a bit more tropical in a sense yes. like yes yeah. it's like ding 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 yeah he beats it it's the pulse is faster and um I've made some afro beats songs and I enjoy them they're very easy to write to as well but it's it's, the, it's like the pulse of life ding, 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 ding. you can't help but move when you hear that rhythm um, yeah. And I can imagine the footwork follows. So it's yeah, it's, I think it's um it's it's a big genre in the UK Afrobeat, um, and it's it's yeah, I would like to make more of that. I have to say it's it's happy music. There's never a dull yeah. Afrobeat song. Also, uh, back on flowers, um, like the song has you know really impacted the garage scene. And like it's been like remixed, sampled, um, you know, like covered many times, and even featured into um a TV show um I was watching, uh, I may destroy you, if you are familiar yeah. with it, yeah, I am, yeah. In like the first episode, the song is playing, and um I wanted to you know ask like whenever you look back at the song, you know, has anything changed? Like, are you still learning about something new? Are you still learning? something new about it every day like um is there anything you would change about flowers i think in terms of its impact and the, the use of it in tv shows and things now i would never have imagined 25 years ago that this would be the case um so it, it shows me that the song's bigger than i ever thought it it could be and, and still is so i feel a sense of pride and gratitude for that with the song itself it's hardwired into my DNA now, so it's like a part of me. Um, I have to confess, if ever it comes on the radio, I don't want to hear it um, because I have to hear it all the time. It's literally like, literally a part of it. I carry it around with me. And sometimes I think I'd like to break free from it a little bit 
because a lot of other stuff that is potentially really decent gets ignored because everyone's so focused on flowers. However, I've come to a, a, a state of acceptance with that. Just roll with it and be grateful because there are so many people who don't even have that and they've worked so much harder and some of their content is fantastic. So I do now feel a sense of gratitude rather than the frustration I had felt at times with it being the only focus of my 25 year career when probably got 500 other songs or projects that could have been even better. I don't know, but um, now I'm at peace. And, and I get sent remixes of it every week pretty much by people online or through Instagram or whatever. And it's nice to hear that young people who were not even born then are, are doing their own versions of it. They've, they've taken the time to do it. And then they seek me out to send it to me to see what I think. I think it's a great thing. Um, no, but that's really amazing. And I think of like, again, like Pink Pantherist, her song Pain. And like how that also like opened the door for like a lot of like her audience, younger audience to be like, like, oh, like, you know, what's how was the song created? And like the fact that she took like, um, I think the karaoke version of Flowers and like kind of like made it, I think produced it into her own way, but still people like still finding the song, like the original song and like coming to you and still like, and I think that's really cool. It's kind of like a cycle almost. And Absolutely. Like, yeah and like also hearing that you know you had this battle with like flowers as well like again being the main song and like kind of like shutting away or like um just like again like I guess overtaking the other songs from the album in person and I will mention I do have like um a lot of other songs too that I like as well like nothing to lose rose so mm -hmm. like those are also my favorites as well off the album oh. but I definitely <laughs> understand where you're coming from with like just like this being the main thing and like not other people listening to you know what else will also you know was created off the album yeah I mean it's luckily the um the label are going to kind of repackage those some of those songs not all of them and re-release and get them remastered and things which may give them another airing but I think at the time um for whatever reason the album was only launched in Germany it was never released anywhere else and it was at a time when you there was no online there was no such thing so you had to physically be able to purchase a cd um and it was only released in one country so it kind of did us a disservice in one way however a song once it's written is there forever and it can always be remixed and always be repackaged so i'm hoping that some of those songs off the album get an airing now we have the internet so hopefully it's easier to, to push that and new music as well and existing music that we've done since the album in person. Um, but I haven't listened to the in-person album in 20 odd years. So it might be worth having another listen and I'll probably find lots of things that I'd want to replace. <laughs> oh, I wish I could re-sing that. Oh my God, I hate that part. I know what I'm like. And I like that, you know, you're asking about the, the latest release because it's quite often I never get the opportunity to talk about anything other than flowers. So not that I'm dissing flowers. I'm so grateful, like I said, but it's nice to be able to kind of show a wider remit of other things that we've been working on rather than just this one track. And hopefully, you know, there could be something else that does as well, but it's like a lottery. It really is. And that's one thing I've found about the industry. Um, you can have great material, but you need so many different ingredients to make that material um, become a success. Um, and it's about having all of those ingredients at the right time with the right team. I did wanted to ask your relationship with Catherine, I think that's her name. Yes, like yeah. how is that now? Yeah. I haven't seen Kath for a good few years. We've spoke on the we spoke on the phone periodically through lockdown. And it was great to be able to laugh and giggle. But then I'm busy all of the time and she's very busy um, with her own, um, her own, I don't know if she did an album, but she's got a project anyway, doing traditional music and um, Irish music and folk music. She's an excellent pianist and vocalist. She likes the live circuit a lot and an excellent songwriter. So she wants to push her own um, music and I'm just hoping that the world gets to hear that soon as well, because um, she has a lot to offer. But that happens when you get 
older, you, you can go for years without speaking to friends and it doesn't feel like years. It's like, where's the time gone? Yeah. And, and it's a case of that, really, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. And that definitely reminds me of like um, how right now I'm in college and, um, you know, in New York and like I'm kind of away from my friends from home. Kind of found like acceptance, like, you know, like we're all going to be busy doing our own thing. So, you know, but we'll all yeah. find a time to like come back together and just. Yeah. yeah. And it won't be as often as it used to be when you were younger and not in college. You become busier with um, working, with try doing your side hustle with resting, um, going to the gym or whatever, life happens and you see people less, unfortunately. And especially when you've not seen your family as much, you prioritise seeing family, so then you don't see your friends as often. And that, I have to say, becomes more and more the older you become. I'm hoping the next decade of life, I get to reconnect with friends because we've the time, because we've achieved everything we need to. But 20s, 30s, 40s is very much a case of um, hustling a lot and not always having the time to connect as much as you'd like to, sadly. Like then. speaking of, you know, being young, do you have any advice for um, young artists that are like entering into the music? I'm sorry, the um, into the house or UK garage scene, especially I who's, you know, producing house music and um, garage music? The the one thing that I will say is um, concentrate on quality rather than quantity. Um, so make sure your production is always to the highest standard. My husband always says, always A-B your tracks against other songs that are in a similar range that are already out there doing the business. And it has to be on par production quality wise. Otherwise, it would be difficult to get it past the line to get signed. Also, in getting your music signed, try, um, as I don't know what it's like in the US, but in the UK, there are many record labels which are small, independent, have no budget. You think, oh, I've got my song signed. You sign it to them and it's they don't have the budget to do anything with it and it will be sat on a hard drive forevermore, but you've signed half of your rights away for this song that had you have um, spent the time on the production quality and sat on it and waited for the right label, could have done much better so that's the one thing I would say I've seen a lot of not concentrating on quality enough and signing to labels which aren't established enough and that ruins your song it's, it's sat there doing nothing for eternity so that's the main thing I would say and also um, be easy to work with but not a pushover get the balance right because I've been a pushover too easy where I cared more about offending others and it's done me a disservice. So it's about being nice to work with, never be a diva or anyone that people will say, oh, I don't wanna work with them, they're difficult, they've got an attitude. Um, but also being firm, but fair. Know your own rights, know what you want to do and, and adapt an approach where you are um, diplomatic. You can say, get your message across, but in a way that the, per the recipient knows that you're coming from a place of fairness not ego and that that would be my advice to any new up-and-coming producer dj artist and work hard you do have to work hard yeah for no money yeah. to begin with it's all for free yeah. but eventually it will pay off eventually yeah no thank you for the advice and like i definitely take it in especially like you know just like being diplomatic and like you know getting your point across but also being fair but also you know being respectful at the same time but also being furry so all of those combined together most definitely and um no yeah I'm just like still all um I know time is running out on the zoom but is there anything else you'd like to you know mention or add for th this interview Oh, well, I will say just keep your eyes peeled on my Spotify, Sweet Female Attitude and uh, Leanne Sweet FA on Instagram because I'll be posting new music, new shows, but certainly the Spotify, I like to direct people there for upcoming new releases. And yeah, that's that's it for now. But yeah, it's been really good talking to you and thank you so much for um, for wanting to speak to me. It's, it's, it's nice to be able to um, talk to somebody stateside and hopefully we can get out there at some point and do some performances. It'd be great. Well, thank you so much again. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. You take care. Have a good day. You too. too Bye long. now. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.